Thanks. All right, can you give me the back there? Can you give me a lot? Okay. Well, thanks very much. And really, thanks very much to all the guys that have put this together. I think it's a wonderful thing. And I think what's really happy to see is the social contract between the city and the people of the city. And that's the same catch up. I think it's going to be catch up quite fast. So, I'm not going to talk to you today about what the government hasn't done, what the city hasn't done, what uh, anybody else hasn't done. I'm going to talk about what we have done, what we can do, the opportunities that are facing us. Um, and we just got uh, yesterday, we just got, we, at the moment, there's a, a wonderful insert running on our company on, on CNN globally. And it's amazing to see how many people are contacting us from places like Peru, from Sydney, from uh, California, and then they've got the down there, etc. This is not, uh, we don't have the sole franchise on drought and uh, on the catastrophe that we're facing here. But you know what's the happy thing about it is that we are becoming the experts very, very fast. It's a blue mark of luck now. So, uh, this, this technology that we're talking to you about today, I hope you today I'm going to be talking about the drought of the pictures I'll show you what I'm talking about. I think, can we start off by just saying well done to all of these guys and give them a round of applause for the city of Cape Town for the drought of the pictures? I think with a, with a, with a, a thing like a, like a drought, uh, and it, it suddenly comes up on me, you know, life comes at you from point blank range, there's no warning. And, and there was no warning for this. So in this situation, there was no warning. So a lot of guesswork by everybody. Nobody can be held accountable for no guesswork. Communication is accountability, no you can't. It's happening. But it's that you see the main catch up time of actually do it. Okay, so. We're going to look at the, the differentiation of the solutions. The solutions that uh, a city or a government can come together and say, what macro solution have you guys got? Can you pull to your harvest group? How do you want? Okay, then let's have a look at that. But let's have a look at the cell, let's have a look at the using bay water, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of micros makes up a macro. So you can have a look at your society, and that's what we came up with whilst working so well. We came up with the answer was, what are the failing people, the vulnerable people? Society, not calling this in the pools of the toilet, but I'm actually thinking water. Who's, who's not going to be getting that? So, if you put one of our larger machines into the next like two, four, about two, two thousand meters a day in a school, that entire school can run 100% perfectly pure water each and every single day. There's like 1,700 schools down the Western Cape. Each school had one of those, and we've got a solution to the people that are actually going to be the kids of our society. So I think that the, the answer is I was talking the other day to a mate of mine, John Van Rooy, from Tokyo Hotel, to see what those guys have done, to see what individuals have done, and to see what you know, there's going to be lots of rats and mice at the time of the time of need. It's easy to sell something. So you are going to get those people, but I think in the main, I think what you're finding, you find that the brain stress are coming together, the board leadership that's here. Uh, and the, the, the combination of people, I hope you talk to someone out of the Pichetta who do exactly what we do. And we don't see them as opposition, we see them as fellows, as colleagues in the same industry. Because at the end of the day, there's only one person who's going to make a company like ours, a commercial venture, where we can have some business reasons at the end of the day. So, let me tell you a little bit about our, about our water. Basically, the way that the technology works is that air gets drawn in, there's water in the air. The water gets drawn, the air gets drawn, and it gets cooled down. So condensation takes place, goes from ultraviolet uh, sanitization process through up to mechanical filters, and then some other filters that gets mineral and at the end of the process. So it's basically harvesting humidity. That's the, the point phase that we use. And you know, it means billions and billions and billions of dollars going to Mars to look for water. Why don't they just stop in Cape Town? Because it's right here. The answer is right in my nose, it's right here, we're sitting in it, it's right in front of you, it's in the air. And I don't buy the fact that there is too little water, it's not too little water, it's not an abusable water. I don't want to quote phrase uh, Dr. Anthony Turner, but uh, he's got a point that he talks about uh, the, the paradigm of, uh, of plenty, or I'm not quite sure the words he uses, but the facts of the day, the facts of the matter, I think he's on the right track. How do we best reuse the water that we've got? How do we best use what we have got right now? Our solution is that we can make water where it is needed. We don't need to take water to where it's needed. So we have a prototype now with uh, a 2,000 meter machine on it. It's on a trailer, it's mobile. And uh, that machine can go anywhere and you plug it in. So let's talk, go back to desalination and aquifers. 
So when the city gets the, it's one of those projects done, we've got all that strategy, the water coming in. How do you get the rules to the bay in the How do you get the rules to Borders Bay or to Stellenbosch or to up the West Coast? You've got to have a tanker, you've got to have a driver, you've got to make sure there's no traffic jams because the social contract that a city or a, a, a province has with their people is that people bring you water and it'll get a quarter of business city streets at 11 o'clock. Chances are it's not going to be at 11 o'clock. And the ramifications of that, I don't want to go into. I know that uh, I read uh, a while ago that when trains are late to the Cape sometimes they get burnt. So imagine if, if, the, if the water doesn't get there on time. So we make water where it's needed. We take that trailer, we park it, we've got the diesel generator, we make it in, and we make water where it's needed, and it continues to make water as it's reading that uh, it's necessary. So those are the sort of things that they are very involved in. Um, I must just say that. There's no single answer, in my opinion. My opinion is that what's actually happening is that it's a multitude. Somebody was stopping now and asking about, uh, about what what the shoe is like. It's, it's an end which is not at all. So you might need a borehole end. You might need a, a little machine like that that that's over there that makes uh, 30 meters. By the way, I'm going to give the uh, air hey, water up here. Uh, these guys, this guy, look at it. Uh, say hello, yeah, Brendan. That's Brendan, okay. He put his life on the line to start the world's first humidity bottling plant. It was right here in Cape So each and every single day, he's putting out between 1,500 and 3,000 liters of water, uh, bottles of water that are coming and they're going to, they're starting to go uh, to restaurants, to hotels, and the like. Um, the water's never touched the ground. If I said to you that 10 years ago, there's going to be a place in Cape Town, 10 years' time, that uh, bottles humidity could have pulled me crazy and, and, uh, and put me in a couple of distance. But the, the, it's not just in our business that this is happening, it's in any other business. It's amazing what's coming up. If you put eight on it, then it's a good job, not just in saving water, but also in finding alternative sources of water. And I believe that the collaboration is going to be what's going to make us a success. So from this day forward, I would ask you, please. Not talking about Cape Town, but the first city, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do the uh, uh, interview this afternoon. I'll start with that. Is that, there's, that, that I'm not going to call Cape Town the first city that could run out of water. I'm going to call Cape Town the city of solution. Let's work at a Let's get us have a social contract with the city of Cape Town. So I'll tell you what, Mr. Politician, Mr. Politician, Mr. Politician, Mr. Politician, Mr. Politician, what we're going to do is we're going to turn up anything around. Let's turn up anything upside down. And it's with gatherings like this that that type of stuff uh, starts happening. So, that, uh, that, that is at Kiloni Gardens, that's one of our small machines. And that small machine, by the way, paid the air water here, it's valued at 22,000 rand. There'll be a raffle here, we can hate it uh, to uh, get to that. And uh, there'll be a raffle later on this afternoon to get details at the back there. And uh, some lucky person is going to go home with, with one of those. So, the, the, uh, that is a 2,000 litre machine. And when we talk about 2,000 litres, that's what that machine is capable of making. Uh, in Cape Town, you've got a 77% humidity and a 16.2 degree Celsius average temperature throughout the year. Um, and that's going to give you about 60% of the capacity of that. Depending on your storage, that could become a bottling plant, that can run a whole hospital, that could be a dialysis facility, that could be a, a, on wheels, it could be for emergencies, for drought, for famine, for, uh, for, for, for all the rest of it. And I'll just, I'll just put a couple of these things together over here. When you go to the job, uh, if you go to the job today, you march out at the job too long, the swimming pools are closed, the sorters are closed, the ski bars are closed. And we came up with this, and uh, this is going very well. We've got a, a contract in, uh, in uh, Western Europe, which we're hoping to sign uh, for 400 units like this. It's gymnasium, it's right throughout. So, if you can imagine the corporates where you get those dripping bottles, those big plastic things, uh, you about 18, 19 liters, a five gallon standard, and you've got to order those things in. You've got to have space to, or to, to pack them in as a company. You then need to get it from your storage, you need to get it to the actual apparatus that, that pours that water. You then need to get the empties back to store them in with it, and the process goes on and on. With these machines, you park, you move them in. Park it, you switch it on, and that water makes all in one of those opportunities all day. So it's an actual convenience from our company point of view. We call ourselves a convenience and a purity model, not a drought model. The fact that it's a drought model means that people are getting hit extremely fast. And what happens when my shots don't work? 
we've uh, proudly just completed a, uh, an installation at the Fresno, uh, and there's a house up there a few doors away from uh, the residents new houses. Uh, and that is uh, it's off the grid completely with one which uh, the, the mains are off, uh, and all that water has been used there for the showers, for the, 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 the toilets, sorry, the toilets are on the grey, on the grey upgrades. But um, all the water that you've cooking, the, the bath, bath and the showering, etc., comes from that which that comes from here. The beauty of it is this, think about this for one second, is that for every meter that we drink from the air, so if I take a meter of water from the air right now, Means I haven't taken that water from the tap. It means I've left that water behind from my fellow South African somewhere out there. There's a wonderful, wonderful organization called Water Shortage South Africa uh, that moves water to people that haven't got water. They're doing a terrific job here in South Africa and they need our support. Um, and they are, they are ostensibly um, there to move a bottle of water, but each and every single day, go bring the next bottle of water, go bring the next bottle of water to keep that community going. They allow machines to switch them on and they keep making water where they need it. So that's the gym, the gym out there. This is uh, uh, air water, pet air water in the Lani Gardens. That's where the, the water gets, gets made over there. That's, give, uh, look it up on the website, it's kateairwater.ca.ca. Get them a shot anytime. And take school kids there. Take, uh, take, take yourselves, they're going to take a family over there. Go and have a look at it. Doing a wonderful, wonderful job. And that's him over there. And. Uh, <laughs> Except please, please don't call me up with action on my face. Well, I am, so that's him over there. That's Brendan, he runs it, him and his team create uh, six new jobs, or another job there, there's six new jobs over there. I've uh, duplicated that and been opening up a uh, facility about four times the size of that in Hellenburg. And that will probably uh, give 50 to 20 people jobs. Those aren't people that we've taken from this library, from Boca Farm or from one of the, one, one of the existing markets. It's a brand new category, it's a brand new industry. Um, and they were created. They're getting an enormous amount of publicity, which, uh, which is fantastic, and it's worldwide. The only thing that really concerns me is why is it all the, all the overseas channels that are coming over here? So we've got Chinese television, BBC, we've got Sweden now, uh, Australia, uh, 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 they do some stuff on us. Um, and the reason that they are out here is they want to learn from us. And if they want to learn from us, because there's a massive opportunity. Cape Town could be the biggest manufacturer of these types of machines and exports it. I saw any other country, it doesn't really matter. There's, there's a big enough fire over here. So, uh, opportunities where it's at. That's in China with a couple of big ones. There's a graphic on our website, which is airwater.ca.ca. It goes through the process on, on, on how it works. But I just want to end off by saying let's make Cape Town a city of solutions. Let's change our paradigm. Let's change our thinking company. Let's stop criticizing. There's no statute to the critic. And uh, I, together with you, um, I'm not going to do that from now on because it's, this is a collaboration that will get our, uh, that, that, that'll get this, this whole thing going and, uh, and, and come up with all the solutions that we possible. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. We're going to ask Greg to stay there for just two minutes. Are there any questions? Anybody want to ask the question? Okay. Um, I also want to be on which is so the question is, what energy is being used to to power your okay, right. at the moment it's electricity? So the fight at the moment is to bring electricity consumption down as much as we can. In 2009, we built a wind turbine in Cape Town called the Fox 17, and it worked extremely well. The hassle, the breakdown was, what did you do with the extra, the extra electricity when the wind was blowing? So there was no, the avenue was blocked with the equity in the municipality. And we could give them the electricity to get a turn for it. And when the wind wasn't blowing, I used the electricity. So that wasn't in place yet. I would suggest that our city here is a bit more forward thinking to that, perhaps we could do that. But it works very, very well. Uh, and uh, there's a few things that we learned. One is that there's a thing called lightning. And we didn't put a lightning master, so we lost the first round <laughs> to lightning. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Ray. Can we give Ray a round of applause? 